Today we're here with Rich Cordham, Vice President of Strategic Partnerships of CARE. Rich, how did you get started in this profession? Were there any specific people or events that led you to this career? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So I've been in specific with senior care now for um, oh, almost 15 years now. Uh, initially, when I started my career within the healthcare setting, uh, first year and a half was on the hospital side of things, and I transitioned over to the senior care space. And uh, it, was, it was quite the difference. You know, one of the things that really kind of acknowledged me is it's just very much of a relationship-based industry. Um, I hadn't had a lot of personal experiences within the senior care sector for... Um, I mean, I've had grandparents that have been in skilled nursing centers or assisted living centers uh, um, and vis remember visiting them as a kid, but just didn't have a lot of those personal experiences. But over the time that I've been within this, within this industry, um, the relationships and the people that I have met along the way just have not only advanced me professionally, but also personally, You've just made some lifelong friends that have, that have uh, been here. It's, it's one of those things, even when I made the transition to care, I've only been with care for almost a year. My anniversary's coming right up here pretty soon. Um, when I was transitioning uh, out of pre previous company that I was with, you know, it was just one of those things that I was looking for some different positions, it had to be in this sector. It was just one of the things that you just kind of fall in love with. And anytime I chat with somebody about this, they don't see themselves anywhere else. Absolutely, the connections and the relationships are so unique and, and strong. From your perspective, how did the long-term and post-acute care industry arrive at this particular workforce crisis situation? Yeah, it's, uh, I've, we're here at the Quality Summit and almost every, if not every session that I've been in, uh, at least in ones even later today, that's kind of the first thing that anybody talks about. Um, it, and it's something that, you know, obviously the last couple of years have really made it more extreme, but even looking back, you know, five, 10 years ago, I remember coming to the Quality Summit when it was called the Quality Symposium, you know, 10 years ago and is held at some, some locations, uh, you know, when the quality initiatives were introduced and we started talking about staffing, it was an issue long before even today. You know, as I mentioned, it's just heightened over the last couple of years. You know, I was looking at some of the goals from that initial um, quality initiatives that were coming out. and from a retention standpoint, you know, turnover is something that's always been extremely high. Obviously, we've always challenged, had challenges with recruitment, but at that time, the goal was to be like 40% of staff turnover. Now, if you look at 40%, that was succeeding in these goals. That was succeeding. And I mean, if you were to look at any other sector, any other industry, and say, you know, you're gonna have 40% turnover, you're instantly gonna think you're going to have challenges. Now, fast forward to where we've been over the last two years, where as an industry in whole, um, we're at the, we've lost the most jobs in the last two years, a little over 400,000 jobs at a 15 year low in terms of where workforce is. And you know the aging and the elderly population is only gonna continue to increase. Um, I mean, it's something we've had for years, just the last couple of years have really, really kind of heightened the issue. Right, absolutely, a storm of all these different pieces coming together. Yeah. In what ways is CARE helping to solve the workforce shortage? Tell me about that. Yeah, so CARE is a really, really unique model uh, and, and aspect. You know, when we're hearing challenges that are happening uh, with, with uh, operators today and workforce, and so CARE, we're a, we refer to ourselves as a labor marketplace. So we're not your traditional agency. Um, if you look at any of our social media, you'll truly understand that. <laughs> we're kind of loud and proud and very bold and obnoxious with our marketing. Um, but, uh, but we're really helping solve a need um, that's there. So we have pre-qualified caregivers that are on our platform. So there's CNAs, RNs, LPNs, and they're just looking for work. We're a platform that helps connect them with communities to fulfill their immediate need of, uh, of filling shifts, but also from a recruitment standpoint. Communities have the opportunity to hire our caregivers, our heroes, as we refer to them on our platform for free. Um, so when we're looking at the crisis and, and everyone needs to try to figure out new ways to recruit and retain, we offer um, you know, a really unique solution that you can kind of try before you buy type of mentality when you're trying to recruit new uh, caregivers into your community. Because uh, we understand a lot of turnover that's happening is in that first 30 to 90 days. You usually know within the first couple shifts if somebody is going to work out at your community. And so we offer that solution that instead of depending upon your traditional interview process to decide if someone's gonna be a good fit with your residents or team members, you can really see them in action and how they engage with 
the family members that are coming into your community, residents that are in your community, but then also your current team members and make sure that everything's a great fit. Wonderful. I really like that sort of try before you buy idea. Um, what are some of the other benefits of finding care workers through care? Yeah. So, I mean, when you look at kind of your traditional agency type model that's out there, everybody just kind of hates your traditional contracts and fees. I know there's been a lot of legislation that's been out over this last year to provide some uh, some relief from that. And, and CARES, it's a, it's a platform that really kind of puts everything uh, into the operator's hands and lets them really control everything. There's not a contract, there's no upfront fees. If you sign up with our platform, we can get you signed up in 20 minutes and posting shifts. Um, but th if you sign up and never use us, we don't have that additional line item month a monthly fee. It's simply free to sign up. If you post a shift on our platform, um, you set the rates. You dictate what you're going to be paying. I mean, if CNA is a $15 an hour job, set the rate at $15 an hour. Only if we fill a shift, we had a small per hour fee that goes along with that. Um, communities get to choose who comes into their building. Uh, it's kind of interesting, just like you would, we get the analogy we're like Uber for caregivers a lot, <laughs> and that comes into place. Uh, but just like you rate your Uber driver after a ride, communities that are on our platform, they rate our heroes on how well they did. So if they're rated four or five stars, they will receive, uh, we'll pay them the next business day. If they're not, then it takes one week before they get their payment. So there's an incentive to do good work when you're going into the communities. And then finally, if, if communities find someone they like, they can hire them for free. Um, there's no buyout fees or, or, or anything that's there. So it's it's a very industry-driven model. Our CEO is, by trait, he was, uh, as he refers to it, a recovering owner-operator. Um, so he's seen these workforce challenges for years. And really, it's a model that helps uh, communities um, find new staff, one. Um, we've heard so many communities. I was just in a session earlier this morning that talked about how um, they stopped accepting residents. They weren't able to bring on new residents because of their workforce shortages that it has been. So we've been able to work with communities, one, to get them fully staffed, but so that way they can bring in new residents and continue to operate where they were um, pre prior to the pandemic. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned sort of the hiring model. Um, is CARE also designed for short-term positions as well? Yeah, so that our, our primary thing is fulfilling the immediate shift needs. Okay. Um, I mean, we'll be the first to say a consistent staff is hands down your best staff. The reality of the world today is we're not all there. I think I saw something uh, in a presentation yesterday, it's like 1% of nursing centers say that they uh, are fully staffed, that they don't have some form of staffing shortage. So it's just a, people aren't there and they're being forced to utilize some external third party. And if they're not using a third party, they're not able to accept new residents that are there. So CARE offers more of that gig mentality, uh, the gig economy mentality, where it's one, to fulfill the immediate need of fulfilling shifts and staffing shortages, but two, the opportunity to, um, you know, hopefully be able to re recruit to have a long-term team member, a full-time team member on your, uh, within your community. Yeah, the gig economy just grown so much. <laughs> it's definitely uh, where people are looking. Many people find work in the long-term care industry almost a calling, a passion. Are you seeing this from your perspective through care? Have you seen some of these special stories? It is, and that's what's really cool because I mean, we have tens of thousands of heroes that are on our platform and we get the ability to reach out and ask questions to them through different surveys. Um, you know, just, just like operators are surveying their employees and their residents and getting feedback, we're getting feedback from, our, uh, from heroes on our platform. And uh, we just did a hero event um, where we got heroes together and actually just had them tell their stories. You know, why senior care? What led you to this? And uh, if you go on any of our social media platforms, we have some of those interviews that are there and just listening to our heroes tell their stories. They want to remain in this sector. One of the questions that we asked our heroes was, you know, do you see yourself in the industry in the next five years? And it's 70, over 70% 70 say yes. We, I see myself staying in this industry, but when we ask the community leaders that, it's the exact opposite. It's only like 30% say that they would see their frontline care staff. They're thinking they're wanting to leave and explore uh, outside, outside industries, other opportunities. But the heroes that, that we've chatted with, they, it, it is their calling. They love what they do. Um, and they, they don't see themselves anywhere else. Yeah, those stories are so powerful. And I love that you refer to them as heroes. <laughs> what, a, what a great term, absolutely. Well, thank you, Rich, for spending a few minutes with us and telling us about CARE. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Wonderful.